John's Tours. Welcome to Liverpool Anglican Cathedral, 619 foot long, 331 foot high. The foundation stone was laid in 1904 and finally the cathedral was finished in 1978. The architecture is in the Gothic style and the architect was Sir Giles Gilbert Scott. It is the largest Anglican cathedral in the world and the largest cathedral in the UK. It has the highest vaulting in the world at 175 feet and has the highest and heaviest peal of bells in the world, built with sandstone from Wilton Quarry five miles away. As we approach the outside of the cathedral, we can see to our left the oratory built by John Foster Jr. in 1829. This is where services were held before interments took place. The oratory is a perfect Greek Doric temple with a six-column portico at each end. It has no windows but is lit from above. It is seen as one of the greatest Greek revival monuments in the UK. Placed on its miniature acropolis, the oratory crowned the deep chasm that was once a quarry. The stone from that quarry went to build some of our oldest buildings in Liverpool, such as the Town Hall. The quarry itself was laid out by John Foster as a cemetery. There were great ramps wide enough to take a funeral carriage. These roadways were protected by raised walls to protect the carriages from falling off the edge. The setting of the garden is on an immense scale and is well worth a visit to which a certain playwright called Charles Dickens used to walk and remarked upon the grandeur of the area and the graves, one of which was dedicated to a Mr. Oliver. As we walk to the opening of the cathedral, you will see a statue with open arms called The Welcoming Christ by Dame Elizabeth Frink. Art as always in the eyes of the beholder and Liverpool, famous for its humour, some people have called this statue Frankenstein, but I will leave you to decide your own thoughts. We walk in through the left-hand door and we walk past the welcome desk and we turn right and stop and take a moment to take in the space and the awe-inspiring scale and beauty of the cathedral. Gilbert Scott said, Don't look at my arches, look at the space that I have created. Even though the cathedral's arches are not only magnificent, but the highest Gothic arches ever built. John Betjeman, one of the most loved poets, famously called the Liverpool Cathedral one of the great buildings in the world. As we look towards the sanctuary, we can see the immense Te Deum windows. And if we look behind us to the entrance of the cathedral, we can see the Ben Edict T window. It covers... 1,600 square feet and contains six tons of glass of which there are 200,000 pieces held in by nine tons of special bronze bars. The window is a sparkling riot of colour. The risen Christ at the head with three lancets all of 52 foot high. The fan light is 32 feet by 9 feet and the subject of the hymn All Things Bright and Beautiful. In the fan light we see Jesus' hands extending his welcome and blessing. The glass here is thicker to withstand the strong winds from the Irish Sea. Let us examine the windows in the well, and we will go from left to right in a clockwise direction. The first window is by William Wilson, and which we call the Bishop's Window. Many notable bishops can be found here, including the martyrs Ridley and Latimer, and the modern-day Bishop of Liverpool, Bishop Chavez. Our next windows are all designed and executed by Carl Edwards due to Wilson's declining health. So the first window here is the Parsons window and here we see the image of Thomas Arnold, headmaster of rugby school and the rugby ball. There are many who have enriched the life of the church but if I may point out the Reverend John Venn and the group of evangelical clergy who call themselves the Clapham sect. They are shown drinking tea, 
The rules dictated that they drank tea at 4.15 on a Monday from a silver teapot. The Clapham sect famous for its advocacy to the end of slavery and the review of the penal system. The layman's window is next for those who worked on the cathedral. The clerk of works, the quarrymen, the bell foundry, to mention just a few. And a picture of Bodley, Gilbert Scott, Lord Derby and William Forwood, the driving force behind the building of the cathedral. As we turn the corner, the first window is the musician's window. And this pictures many of the composers, conductors, to that distinctive tradition of Anglican music. The next is the hymnologist's window. Perhaps we can find Mrs. C.F. Alexander and her handbag. She bought us All Things Bright and Beautiful. And at the bottom right is Sir Cecil Spring Rice, with Washington's Capitol building in the background. His famous hymn was I Vow to Thee My Country, sung at Charles and Diana's wedding. Our last window is the scholar's window, and at the bottom right-hand corner is our own Dean Dwelly, whose gift of organisation was so important in the building and finance of this cathedral. Let us continue our tour to the middle of the cathedral, where we can see the original award-winning model of the cathedral by Giles Gilbert Scott. Scott was only 22 when he won the competition, the architect assessors being Bodley and Shaw. There was some concern that Scott had no experience. A smoking pipe rack had been his only design, and that he was a Roman Catholic. So Bodley was appointed joint architect for the cathedral. The partnership became fractious, especially after Bodley accepted two commissions to design two cathedrals in Washington, D.C. and San Francisco, and was away from Liverpool for some considerable time. Scott became very frustrated and was about to resign when Bodley died in 1907. So Scott decided to totally review his first plan from that of a two-tower cathedral to a one-tower cathedral. By the old cathedral model is the cope chest, the cartouches of Admirals Horton and Noble in their leadership in the Battle of the Atlantic and the Whispering Arch. We are now going to see the oldest part of the cathedral, the Lady Chapel. The Lady Chapel is a real hidden gem and is revered for its beauty and its serenity. Here we can see the cooperation between Bodley and Giles Gilbert Scott. The Lady Chapel can be described as a small parish church that is connected to a cathedral. The Lady Chapel has its own organ. It is a church within a church. But the greatest aspect is its dedication to the works of women, not only in the UK, but throughout the world. It has its own stained glass windows to some of our great women in history. The Lady Chapel is lit by six Art Deco chandeliers. And at the sanctuary, you can see an elaborate reredos and the magnificent story of the pelican. A charming statue made by Giovanni della Robbia from the 15th century of the Virgin Mary. And written across the walls of the chapel is, and I quote, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomever shall believe in him shall have forever lasting life. We are now going to see some sculpture and paintings within the cathedral. The sculpture that you see next is dedicated to Bishop Shepherd. It represents a pebble being thrown into water and its ripple effects. A pebble that in one part is smooth, but also has some pitted marks. Bishop Shepherd with Archbishop Warlock of the Roman Catholic Cathedral, became inseparable in their dedication to support, defend Liverpool against all comers, including the British government. Both bishops were so good in their advocacy of Liverpool that they were never out of the newspapers and were nicknamed Fish and Chips. We are now entering the sanctuary and we can see two paintings by Adrian Wisniewski of the Scottish School, 
one which is dedicated to the Samaritan, celebrating love, and the second picture which represents the family. Behind the sanctuary is a Te Deum window, four lancets donated by Mrs. Ismay of the White Star Line. The first lancet is dedicated to the Apostles, all 14 of them, and they include St. Paul and the honorary Apostles, St. Barnabas and St. Matthias. The second lancet is dedicated to the Prophets, the third to the Army of Martyrs, and the fourth is dedicated to the Holy Church throughout the world. In front of the Te Deum window is a sanctuary, carved from sandstone and embellished with gold leaf. The Last Supper is shown in the bottom part of the Rarados, with a seat empty. The crucifixion is shown in the centre, with scenes of the Passion. Let's walk to the choir. On the left-hand side is the cathedral, and on the floor is a mosaic of the arms of the diocese. The Eagle of St. John, a ship that represents Liverpool, a Bible, and the Rose of Lancashire. In the choir, we have two more pictures by Christopher Lebrun, President of the Royal Academy from 2011 to 2019. And it represents the Good Samaritan and the Prodigal Son, Forgiveness and Homecoming, all paintings donated by the Jerusalem Trust. The choir itself has over 70 choristers, men, boys and girls. The organ itself has 9,760 pipes, some 32 foot long, some three quarters of an inch. There are 145 speaking stops, and when you pull out all the stops, can you imagine the volume? There are two consoles, and the organ itself is a Henry Willis III. We come to the tower, donated by the Vesti brothers, and what we can see is 175 foot high, but the tower in total is 331 foot high. In the tower, are the 14 Barlet Bells, of which the St. George is 14.75 tonnes, and they are the highest and heaviest bells in the world. In the centre space, we can see some great carvings by Carter Preston. The figures on the north side are virtues, but at their feet are vices. On the south side are a general theme of arts and sciences. We're now off to the baptistry. The font, made of French marble, has 12 sides with an apostle on each side. The floor inlaid with swirling waves and fishes, a symbol of Christianity. The baldacchino is 39 foot high, made of oak and designed by Scott. The design is absolutely wonderful and it can rise and fall quite easily by pulleys. Last but not least is the small design by Gilbert Scott, the K2 telephone box. The Anglican Cathedral, the world's largest non-Roman Catholic cathedral, standing on St. James's Mount, is a soaring mass of locally quarried red sandstone, built in the Gothic style, overlooking the River Mersey, guarding the very soul of Liverpool. The cathedral, built largely from the wealth of Liverpool merchants when the port of Liverpool looked after a sixth of the world's shipping. I have visited this cathedral at least a hundred times, and each time I see and I am told something that I haven't seen or heard before. The volunteer guides of the cathedral are so helpful, and I am amazed by the in-depth knowledge. Please have a look not just once, but many times, and you will be delighted. This tour is about the Anglican Cathedral in Liverpool. Thank you for listening.